Hello, my name is Will Hayden, and today we're going to show you how to make a grid that looks like this on your moon mining field that includes both a two-dimensional mining grid in the center where your rocks are going to be, as well as a three-dimensional, uh, not cube, but, but a box uh, around that uh, for strategic purposes so that you have tacks to warp to if you have blingy things out, for example, and uh, need to call in a drop or get support or whatever, right? So you've got a nice set of bookmarks on field already so that you already have predefined points you can warp to to mine and predefined points you can warp to to uh, for combat support. So that's what we're going to go over here, step by step. All right, so here I am in the Athenor and I'm going to undock. And so we'll start with some tacks around the structure itself. I like to have a couple different tacks on a stop ship here. I like to have what I call a stoop, which is just above the undock, but it's out of the way of the undock, so you're not going to run into, uh, you're not going to cause people to bump or anything like that. And what we're going for here is sort of right above this thing that looks like a landing pad. We're going to turn on our tactical overlay, make sure that we're more than 5k away from it. That looks pretty good, but we're in line with the center line of the station. And now we're going to uh, create our bookmark. The keystroke for that is Control B, and then name it whatever naming convention you want. I personally like naming it Stoop with a little uh, angle bracket in front of it that helps it sort to the top. And I call it Stoop, and then we'll call it uh, No Jackpots, because uh, that's the name of this Athenor. And there we go. So now we've got our bookmark. <laughs> so that's the first one. The second one you want is you want to you want to know actual distances to the structure. Uh, if you just click on this, you know, it shows, shows me as being zero meters away. That's because it's 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 measuring my distance to the docking bubble, and that's not very accurate for our purposes. We need to. There's a couple of things that we need to triangulate to make sure that we are aligned where we want to be. So what I need is an actual location at the middle of this that I can sort of use to take uh, distances from. So I'm going to just create a, uh, a bookmark for the station itself. And now I can, when I hover over that, now I see a distance to the center of the structure. And I see that I'm 17 kilometers away versus zero. That's a pretty significant difference, as you might imagine. Uh, so yeah, uh, and that's going to help me measure distances. Now, the second thing I want is um, is I need some place to make sure that I can warp out uh, from the ore field. So the second tack that I want is uh, going to be on the far side of the structure from the ore field, but still confidently within the docking bubble. And I don't like where I ended up there, a little too far. Uh, personally, I like to be uh, within 5k, and I've got my micro warp on, so I'm still going too fast. Uh, I'm a little bit retentive with this now. It's worth noting that that little that that little blinker there is dead center, uh, aligned with the center of the structure, and you can sort of see that if you look look down the middle of the structure, like it's a like it's a gun sight, for example. Uh, so that's a, a useful uh, point to see where is middle. It's also worth noting that if you look under your, your ship like that, then it's pretty accurate how, the way you click versus where you go. So that's uh, what I tend to do when I really need to, to be precise about um, double clicking in space. Okay, now we're going to create a spot here. And one thing I, I highly recommend is um, don't bother naming your bookmarks when you create them. Set the names after the fact, because you're trying to get a bookmark in a specific place, and if you want to do that efficiently, you don't ever want to stop moving. Uh, if you stop moving, then you don't know 
if you're going to be moving in the same direction again when you start moving again, which is you have to double click again, and you want that, you want precision, and you want efficiency. And so do one thing at a time. Like when I'm making bookmarks, especially when I'm burning the, the lines, I'm not naming anything. Like I can look at them after the fact and I can name them later. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Uh, that way you can get that bookmark created quickly, which is important for your accuracy. Um, if you have a mouse or a keyboard that supports um, macros, uh, you can uh, you can set a macro that does like Control B and then waits a quarter second and then hits Enter, um, and to create the bookmark for you, just to speed that up a little bit. Uh, your mileage may vary whether you think that that is in agreement with Eve's EULA. Um, I think technically they say that you you should probably not have uh, keys that perform multiple actions. Um, so, at your own risk, do the thing. Um, but uh, you can always, one thing to note is, you can hit Control-B and you can have the window open. It doesn't create the book, it creates the bookmark in the, where you are when you hit Enter, not where you were when you hit Control-B. So, worth it. You can just have that window open, and when you're at the place you want to be, hit enter. There you go. Uh, last thing, sort of general principle, keep in mind that this stuff is still, you know, not as instantaneous necessarily. Server ticks are a thing. Um, and, yeah, so take that into account when you're, when you're hitting, uh, hitting your bookmark creation. So now that we've got our, um, we've got our stoop. And we've got our, um, I usually just call this the InstaDoc, because it works as an InstaDoc. The Stoop does as well, usually, or always, but uh, but just to differentiate that, I call that the Stoop, I call that the Doc, and then I will often burn in a straight line, uh, you know, uh, a few thousand kilometers out there and make an undock. Pretty typical stuff. Um, then, uh, using these, these little light beacons is super helpful, because I know that 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 little blinky light up there, I know that that's dead center, right above the middle of the station. So, I'm just gonna go up there. I'm just gonna double click on it, and activate the micro warp, and for the record, I'm, I'm in a stiletto here uh, with a, uh, it's not a specific burning stiletto. There are certainly faster ships you can do, uh, but I don't have a specific burning ship. Uh, and I'm gonna overshoot. Yep, of course I am. Um, you can also Q-click here if you want, so, uh, you know, if you sort of know, I didn't do it very well here, but you can Q-click if you want to, to maybe get really accurate with those. Uh, I'm going to turn off the micro warp. I'm going to go to that guy. You see I'm right on the edge of tether range now. And the reason I want to be like right on this is because I'm going to burn it up tack now. Now, here's the trick. This is like the single biggest, like, life hack, if you will, for, for burning these, these bookmarks. Um, it's keyboard piloting. Uh, you want to be straight up and you want to be straight down, and there isn't a really good way to do that with the mouse. If you, even if you, like, put the mouse all the way here, where do you click that is straight up here? Right? Because perspective is a thing, right? I can see... There, there, there's no, there's no like single point that's really easy for me to tell this is what I'm rotating around. All right, so if I double click up here, I don't know exactly where I need to click in order for that to be where I expect it to be. Same way with down, right? I should be right on top of the station right now, but watch, it moves around me. It, it's not in this consistent spot, it's moving. Uh, it looks almost like parallax. Um, so, if I want to go straight up or straight down, how do I do that? Well, uh, you can keyboard steer. Now, it, it's not super fast. It doesn't like immediately go that direction, and it's a little bit buggy. But uh, what I do is I get ready to click a slow speed because I don't want to start going fast until I'm definitely pointed in the right direction. Uh, and then I and then I hold the up key. So I'm going to click and hold the up key. Right, you see my up my my line is moving. Okay, so now I'm I'm going straight. I'm still holding the up key because it does weird things. Like when you start clicking, your 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 speed changes or your micro warp drive. It sometimes moves this on us, 
and that's super annoying. So I'm still holding the up key. Now I'm going to max out my speed and now I'm going to hit the micro warp drive. And now that I'm actually like moving pretty good, now I'm going to let go of the up key. So now I know that I'm going straight up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of hover over this and this is the tactical camera is way better for this because now I don't, I don't really care where the ship is. I just care about the distance. So now I can just sit here and hover over that distance and I'm going to make this bookmark when I am 250 kilometers away from the center of the station. But I'm going to need to slow down first so that I get there when I'm supposed to. And I'm going to start slowing down at about 225 or 230. 225. 212, okay, start slowing down. I click over here, shoot for about whatever that is, 429. And then if I've done that well, then I'm sitting at 243, 242, 244, 5, 6, 7. Now I'm getting ready to hit enter here. 8, 9, and, and 250. And now I've created that bookmark. So now I go back to view of my ship, and that was an alt click in space. Now I've got this. Now I can approach the location if I just want to make sure I'm in the right spot. And you'll get a sort of you sort of get a feel for this in Halfway. You're not going to reapproach every bookmark you create to, to to check it to be in the right spot. And you got to also decide for yourself what's close enough. Um, so like here, I am 250 kilometers off the middle of the station. 205 for the docking ring and cool that's exactly where I wanted to be so I'm happy with that now I'm gonna warp down to the stoop because we're gonna make the down tack now so the key at least in my mind the key to efficiency is managing your speed uh, so you don't overshoot and so it's like knowing when to slow down and knowing and then sort of having the, the, the tempo in your mind as the distance is ticking off to say okay I know that I'm about ready to tick off to my next my next in this case 250 but when we're burning the tack grid at 100 like okay I'm, I'm, I'm counting 97 98 what was the time between 97 and 98 okay the time between 98 and 99 so that you sort of are anticipating when you're going to hit the 100 kilometer distance so that it's not surprising you you can actually sometimes like hit your you get a feel for it you just can hit your your bookmark button as you're hitting the the distance that you want that's it's sort of a nerdy thing to be excited about but but there it is uh, so we're gonna we're gonna head back down for that beacon down there which again as we know is dead center below the station oh i should probably demonstrate q clicking that um there's, there's another way of doing this too. I do, is it going to work for me? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Q click to get to where I want to be. Is that going to work? That might not work. Not so much, okay. Um, if you Q click, that, that's using the keyboard shortcut Q to, to uh, use, issue an, uh, an approach command. And so if you have the tactical overlay up, you can, you can do Q clicking where it's like, okay, if I want, if I know I want to fly 10 kilometers, then I can go, I want to click 10 kilometers. Now, if I click again, that's going to be 10 kilometers on the same plane as me. But if I move the keyboard or move the mouse down, now I'm elevating 10 kilometers, but I'm also up at an angle or down at an angle. Uh, this was the first thing I tried to try and go straight up. I was hoping that it would like lock me at straight up, but no, it doesn't. Uh, I had to figure out the keyboard keyboard uh, piloting for the for that part <laughs> not escape I always mix that up it bothers me that escape is the thing uh, okay so we're just gonna go we're gonna head down to that guy I'm gonna go I'm gonna try to manage my speed here you'll get a feel for the ship that you're in and how fast it speeds up and slows down and so the distances I use may not be the same as the distances that you need to use based on your ship, your skills, your level of comfort and all that. So as I start to get close to this and approach it, I'm just going to be ready to hit down because I am just I don't even want to slow down. I don't want to stop close enough. So I'm going to push down now. And so now I'm going straight down. And I flew just about right through that beacon, which is you know, ideally what you want. 
Okay, now I'm going to hit the micro warp. I'm still holding the down key, the down arrow. Now I hit the micro warp, and now I'm cruising. Okay, now I'm going to do that so that it, I don't have, so it doesn't move on me. I'm watching here, and I'm ready. Oh, i got to be ready to slow down, huh? I got an escape key again. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, when I get up to like two something, like 220 is where I'm going to slow down at. I usually try to shoot for like around 500 meters per second because then I know that every two seconds I'm going a thousand meters, which is useful for counting down. So you know, six, seven, eight thousand, nine, da, boom, right? And I was anticipating that that creation because I knew what the cadence was because I knew I was doing about 500 meters per second. I watched when it ticked over to 249, and so I sort of knew already when it was going to tick over to 250 and was and was like hitting the button as it ticked over. <coughs> so it's, you don't have to usually be that precise, but you know, it's kind of fun if you're going to do it, might as well do it well. Um, okay, so now we have, we have sort of our, our main um, structure text. Now we need to get our our mining tax. Um, the ideally, like if you've got, mm, ideally you would you would do this <coughs> when you've got a chunk uh, coming at you, or ideally you would start doing this. Uh, at least ideally from the standpoint of creating bookmarks and the precision, you would do this right before the chunk gets blasted uh, into smithereens so that the chunk is in its final location and you can just bookmark that location as your center point. Uh, but we don't have that in this case. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and we're going to fly right up to the beam. Um, if your if your moon mining laser isn't active, uh, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, if it's assuming it's assuming it's uh, installed, right, then you should still have this model on, on the thing, even if you don't have the beam itself visible. Uh, but we're just going to go and we're going to line ourselves up with the beam, and I might overshoot. Nope, I'm not going to overshoot. Cool. Um, so keep going now and we're just going to align ourselves I'm going a little slow because I turned off the micro warp okay that'll work close enough for government work all right um, now uh, I have the benefit of having a moon chunk that I can align to uh, on this grid. So I can just hit approach if I want to. Um, but if you don't have a moon chunk out yet, um, you st the idea here is we want to fly from the, the, the laser directly toward the chunk or the moon itself. And we want to fly a certain distance and at that distance, we want to set up our center point, which is the anchor around which all of our other bookmarks will be created. I use 190 kilometers away from the center of the Athenor, uh, because that is where on our my corpse previous Athenor, that's where our moon chunk popped at. I don't know if that's standard, if there is a margin of error on that, I don't know. Uh, but pick your distance. I'm going to use 190, and everything else will be will be anchored around that. Uh, so, uh, if you don't have a chunk that you can align to, find where your moon is. Um, in this case, the moon itself isn't clickable, but in the D scanner, uh, if I turn off like the filters and have it show everything, I can see that this is this is moon six that uh, that I'm that I'm around. So I'm just going to align to it, <coughs> and now I don't need the D scanner anymore. So I'm going to remove that. All right, and step on it. Right, and I don't need to see that anymore. And so when I do that, I'm just I'm, I'm right-click dragging so that I'm not following the ship anymore because I want this this to be just visible. Um, 
I don't want to have to like follow it with the mouse. I don't care. To, I don't need to see the ship right now. It doesn't matter. I know that I'm approaching the moon, so it's fine. Now I'm going to do 190, so I'm going to start slowing down at like 165-ish. Okay, we'll start slowing down. Oh, I don't actually... I wasn't going full speed, so this is going to not have me be as efficient, but pretty close. All right, so I've, got, I've still got 10 kilometers to go. So that's a little less efficient, but... You know, you'd rather slow down too soon than too late, because then you got to turn around. Uh, and that takes way more time. I'd rather be going slower for those last 10 kilometers than to overshoot it by two kilometers. You know, so we're going to be ready to hit it here. There it is, 190. Okay, so now we'll go back to our ship. Now we're going to approach location. Okay. Now this guy I am going to rename on the spot, and I usually call it Pop, <laughs> with question mark, because I don't know if this is where the Pop is going to be yet, but you can name it whatever you want, you can name it center point, you can name it X, X marks the spot, whatever. Um, okay, now you have a decision to make. The decision is, if you're going to make a three-dimensional box of, of bookmarks, uh, do you want the, the sort of the horizontal dimension of that to be flat uh, or planar where, you know, when you have the tactical overlay up, you know, this defines a very clear up and down. This way is up, this way is down. Where this circle is, is, is on the same plane as me. Now, this Athenor is relatively close to being planar with the moon, but some aren't. Uh, some are quite a bit off axis. Uh, so you want to decide for yourself, do I want the horizontal plane of my grid or my, my, uh, my box to be flat on the same plane, or do I want it to be uh, relative to the angle between the moon and the and the and the Athenor. Uh, it's way simpler to have it just be flat, but you can do it either way. Uh, I just think flat is way easier. If I wanted to to put it in line with the Athenor, right, uh, then from the center point here, then I would approach the Athenor. Specifically, I would, I, yeah, I would, I would approach the Athenor, and then when I get a hundred kilometers from the center point, I would create my next bookmark. Likewise, uh, when I want to go hundred kilometers behind this 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 vertical slice, then I would just approach the chunk or or align to the moon, and when I get a hundred kilometers away from my center point, create the next bookmark, and then those become the anchor points for these slices, right? So, the, the, so what we're doing here is the box we make is three vertical slices. We have a center slice, which is in theory centered around the, the moon chunk pop location, and then we have a slice in front 100 kilometers and a slice in back 100 kilometers, and I call those the A, B, and C uh, layers, A being the closest to the Athenor, B being the middle one where the pop happens, and C being the further layer from the Athenor. So um, each of those layers has this this middle bookmark as their center point as well, and everything gets keyed off of them. And so the question is, do you want those to be all sort of in line with this, 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 this laser or tractor beam, or do you want them to be flat? Uh, I usually opt for flat because uh, it's way simpler to do. Now, the reason it's way simpler is I can just do this. Uh, if I look, if I zoom really close to the ship and look under, then I can look out on the. The reason you want to be close, right, is because uh, if you're if you're really far, uh, then it's hard to see the quote-unquote horizon of the tactical overlay. Versus if I zoom in really tight then I get a pretty clear horizon. And so uh, the Athenor site is really easy because in this case, I actually have like the Brave logo. It's like right there where I want it to be. But if you get this like pixel perfect, which I think that's pixel perfect there. Nope, I just messed it up. It doesn't matter so much at these ranges, but if you're like, if you're going like thousands of kilometers, it might matter. 
but that looks pretty close to pixel perfect. So then I'm just going to double click there and we're going to start cruising. So now I'm going flat and we can see that I'm going flat. If I come out here, I can see that my blue line in my direction is right in line with that tactical overlay circles. So we know I'm going flat and we know I'm going toward the Athenor because um, that was the direction I clicked on. Okay, max speed and do that. Same deal, we're going to slow down when we get to about 75 kilometers is when we're going to start slowing down. There's 60, so now we're going to come down here. Boop, slow down. And we're going to get ready to hit enter here. And server ticks also throw, throw off your, your calculations too for when you slow down. Like if you happen to be like right right after a tick happens, then you won't slow down, start slowing down until the next tick. And so, you know, that's why I usually opt for slowing down at about 25 to 30 kilometers away from where I want to be. Because again, you'd rather not overshoot. So 99, 100 kilometers. Okay, so that's now, if I go over here, that's now the center point for my front layer. Or the A layer, as I, as I call it. Um, I'm just going to reapproach here. I could warp off to, uh, to my uptack and then back down, but that's actually, it, it's pretty fast for us to, to, uh, to my core process. We're doing 5k a second. Now, while I'm moving, I can actually, if I slow myself down a little bit to give myself some time, I can actually use this a little bit to sort of help me uh, do my next, line up for the next one. Now in this case, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to I'm gonna be ready to turn off the visuals for my, my demo bookmarks because I'm going to figure out, okay, exactly where do I need to click? And it's sort of right between these two red guys, red hashes for the targeting range, sort of right in the middle there. So turn them off so that I can actually, oh, I overshot it. Okay, well, either way, I know it's right there where I want to go. So we're going to go that way. Because the problem is you can't double click in space. If you have a bookmark right there, it's going to do an approach to the bookmark, which isn't really what you want. Okay, but we're going now. We're going to speed up. And we're going to switch to our non moving camera. start slowing down. <coughs> I'm going a little bit slow, but that's okay. I'm not going to change it now because then I'll overshoot. So I'm doing, going to be doing about, about four seconds per kilometer now. So I'm six, seven, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Plus, if you're going slowly enough, we know that this line is the 100 kilometer line on our tactical overlay. So you can sort of watch that approach the, the bookmark as well. And you can time it that way if you like as well. Um, so it can be helpful. Okay, so now that we have these three bookmarks, let's uh, let's zoom out a sec and and show you what we've got here, just sort of holistically, right? So let me turn off the overlay. Okay. So right now what we're looking at is we've got our structure, we've got our moon, we've got our up and down tax, we've got our stoop, we've got our our insta doc, we've got our our sort of if we, if we were like surveyors, this would be like the little reflector sticky that they're hitting with their survey equipment to measure distances from. That's this bookmark. And then we have our, our master center point, which is, this is where we expect the, the moon chunk to pop at. And then we have 100 kilometers in front, 100 kilometers behind. From this point forward, we're just going to operate against one layer. And we're not going to demonstrate the whole layer because the process is the same. Um, but you're just going to repeat the process for the other layers. Uh, but I always start 
with the middle one. And this time I will, I will just warp because I've, I've overshot quite a bit here now. Um, I always start with the middle layer because everything else is going to anchor off of that. And if I, if it, you're better off uh, using a single anchor point and, and basing everything off of that or single anchor line or single anchor plane versus like starting at A and then making B off of A and then making C off of B, right? Because then any error that you make in here can be additive and make it even more wrong as you go along. That's so always, you could use a single static reference point. Um, so one trick to, to accuracy here is when you've warped to a bookmark to then, to then use it as your, as your jumping off point, always approach it, right? Because you're going to drop in from your warp in a random spot within 2,500 meters. So that means if you go up from there, then you might be up, but you're going to be off to the side by two and a half kilometers potentially. So reapproach the bookmark that, that you are going to jump off from. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, my up, my up, uh, bookmarks from here. So same thing we did when we did, when we did the, the tack, the up tack from the Appenor. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be ready to click a slow speed and push the up button, the up key. All right. I'm moving so slowly that I'm not, I'm not getting out of alignment from the bookmark in any meaningful way. So I'm, I'm essentially right on top of it. Now I'm going to hit full speed and I'm going to hit that and then I'm going to do my right click theme jig so I don't actually have to see the ship move because I want I want to know how far away I am from this bookmark. Okay, when I get to like 65 or so, I'm going to slow down. Slow down. And I slowed down too soon. Okay, that's a little better. You can sort of manage your speed you start to get a feel for it, you can get, get a little faster. Um, you know, how you get a feel for the server takes and how, how your ship responds to your commands. 97. 98. 99. 100. Okay. Now that I've hit 100, I'm just going to speed up again. Now I'm going to slow down when I get to like 175 because then I'm going to make my 200 kilometer bookmark. Still moving straight up in the same direction. And that's the trick. By not stopping, uh, if you stop ship, then sometimes, especially if you're trying to go straight up, if you stop ship, like, oh, doggone it, I just did that. Okay, now pushing the up key to, to fix that. 98. 99. 200. Uh, I accidentally clicked too far to the left and actually it gave it a stop ship command. And if you're going straight up or straight down, uh, your ship wants to flatten out. That's one thing that, that, you know, Eve doesn't, Eve doesn't have a real, uh, Eve definitely has a concept of up and down and, and Eve wants your ship to be pointed horizontally. Uh, and so if you're moving straight up, and then you stop ship, your nose will start to come down. And uh, if you don't fix that, when you then start moving again, um, you're not going straight up anymore. And your bookmark isn't going to be where you want it. Okay, let's see how we did. So we just created our three bookmarks. And we'll zoom out here. Okay. Oops. So, looks pretty good. So we just made our 100, 200, 300 kilometer bookmarks up. So we'll warp back down to our center point again. Truth be told, like making those isn't actually super critical at this point. Really the horizontal is a bigger deal because what we're gonna do, general process, right? Make your center point, make your forward and back center points, then make your left and right 300s, and then make your left and right 300s on your front and back, and then you're going to just go to each each zero point, zero elevation point, and you're just going to do the 
fly straight up and fly straight down tricks, making your bookmarks at whatever interval you want. Right. Um, a previous strategy that I had was to form the corners of the box, uh, figure out where the corners are supposed to be, and then f and then connect the dots between the corners, and then fly between all the dots I just connected. It's a whole lot more work. It's if you're really retentive about having straight lines, uh, and if you're not super consistent about holding your up key down, then that's going to give you really straight lines because you're because you're just connecting the lines between your 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 corners. Uh, but it's so much more work, so much more time consuming. Uh, it's it's way faster to just make your your zero elevation layer or uh, uh, plane and then. Just fly straight up, fly straight down from that um, way faster. Uh, so again, because I warped to it, I need to approach so that I'm on top of the bookmark. Now, given that making the down bookmarks is the same as making the up bookmarks, you're just flying down instead of up, I'm going to skip those for right now. Um, and instead, let's talk about the left and right bookmarks. Uh, because that is a little tricky. we got to use a little bit of math. Uh, like Because we don't really have a way to know uh, exactly where 90 degrees off of off of this line, you know? This is sort of our baseline, and we want to be 90 degrees off from that. In this case, our line is pretty close to right smack in the middle of, of these two cardinal directions. Um, but it's not exactly, but it's helpful. You know, they don't show up super well, but like you do get these little helper lines in here. Like it's really faint. You can see there's a line right there. Um, and that's probably about where we want to be. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of use that and say, okay, that line is about here. So we're going to get close to our ships so that we get the horizon where we want it. And we're just going to sort of go for this and say, okay, the biggest thing here is to be flat. You can fix left, right, you can fix uh, forward, back, up, down is, is the thing that's harder to fix. So we're just going to go that way. Okay. And then I don't need to see the ship anymore. I just need to know when I'm 300 away. Now, when I'm when I'm doing this initial burn to the sides, I'm not going to burn. I'm not going to make tack, make bookmarks at 100 and 200 kilometers. I'm just going to make the 300. Uh, and there's a reason for that because I don't know if I have the right angle yet. I don't know if I'm 90 degrees, and so I don't want to make the other bookmarks if I'm not sure about that. So, I'm just going to burn all the way out to 300 before I make a bookmark. In fact, I'm not even going to make the bookmark at 300 yet. I'm just going to try and stop at 300, and I really am going to try and stop. And so I'll slow down like I'm going to make a bookmark, but then I'm going to actually stop instead of making the bookmark at, at 300. So we're at 275. So, okay, let's slow down. Okay. And I'm going to tell stop ship at like 299. Stop ship. And I'm at 300. Let's see, do I overshoot? Pretty close. Okay. So let's go back and see where we're at. Okay, here's where we're at. Okay. Now, 300. So how do I know if I got 90 degrees off of this, off of the line between the Athenor and the moon? A little bit of math. So because I know that the, that, that the pop bookmark is 190 away from the Athenor, uh, then I can do a little Pythagorean theorem and um, and I'm not going to pull that up, but just do a search Google Pythagorean calculator and we're going to solve for a leg, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I know that, 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 uh, that A is 190 and I know that C is, looking at this, 356. Uh, oh wait, no, no, let's do that differently. Let's let's solve for the hypotenuse. So if I got one leg is 190, that's how far away 
this bookmark is from the Athenor, and I'm 300 away from that. That's the other leg, is 300. Then I expect the hypotenuse to be 355. A squared plus B squared plus C squared. I actually get 356. So I'm not quite 90 degrees. I need to be a little bit closer to the Athenor. Now, you might say, that's freaking close enough, champ. And you know what? You're probably right. But I'm a nerd, so I'm going to move a little bit close to the Athenor. Now, notice that the way I just did this was I'm going to move perpendicular, or I'm sorry, in parallel to the line between the Athenor and the moon. Right, because I want to maintain my distance to this bookmark because I, that distance is right. It's this one that's too that's too uh, too short. So I want to more or less do this. Try to stay in line up and down. Try to be pixel perfect with that if we can. Okay. Now I want this to be 355. I want it to be cool. I was like right on the money just about. Okay, so I'm still looking at 300. I'm looking at 355. Cool. We're in a good spot. Place your bookmark. Okay, so I just I just line that up. Okay. All right. Now we can reapproach the middle, and now I'll make the bookmarks that are. Um, the ones in between. Right, so full speed. So if I need to start slowing down 25 kilometers before where I need to, I'm looking for slowing down at 225. Or 230, something like that. Because again, you'd rather not overshoot. Okay, boop. or what's our 125 slow down Ooh, close oh that was that was pretty close that's one where I might have overshot it, so I'm going to check. <laughs> I might have overshot it because of the delay in the server tick. 2600, eh, might have overshot. We'll see. But again, this, this too is like you have to decide how much you care. Uh, Alright, so like I'm, I'm, I'm 100 from that, I'm 99 from that, okay. Uh, I'm going to call that good enough. I'll take it. All right. So let's uh, let's warp up to this guy and then warp back down to here. the bookmark and same kind of deal now we're gonna look the other direction try to be 90 degrees off but we know that we can't ever get it exact wow that was wonky it's always a little bit weird while moving to try and get it but let's sort of assume that that's about right and we want to fly that way. 
if you're feeling spicy, you can do one of these. You can actually watch the ship go away. Looks kind of cool to watch your ship fly away from your camera. I think we're just going to wait for this to get to about 270, 275, and then we're going to slow down and try and stop right at 300. Or whatever range you want to do, right? So like here we're making a 300, 300 uh, 600 by 600 grid, so 300 in each direction. Uh, but if you were making a 1,000 by 1,000 grid, then you'd stop at 500. You know, whatever, whatever range you want. Just, just understand how your ship behaves. Uh, so, so you know when you need to start slowing down or when you can hit stop, like you'll get a feel for it. <coughs> Obviously a ship that has better uh, agility or lower mass will will speed up and slow down faster. Uh, so that's just worth worth considering. Um, okay, so I'm just about on the... Nope, not, I'm not doing a bookmark here. I'm just going to stop at 300 and I might overshoot it. No, I think I probably got it. Let's see, am I going to hit 301? Cool. All right. And we're looking for, so go back here. We're looking for 255 again, right? Or 355. Okay. So I'm, I'm definitely too far. I'm two kilometers away. So uh, I'm going to then try and stay parallel with the line between the Athenor and the moon. And I'm going to fly. That way. But I'm going to slow down a little bit though. I don't want to go really fast. Whoa, that was really quick. Nope, too much. I left the micro warp on. That was my mistake. So I need to go a little bit. Yeah, too far. Okay, so back toward the moon then. <laughs> Whoopsie. There's where it was. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to be 355, then we're going to stop. Slowly. Slowly. It is interesting when you have how you have when you have it hovered. It updates on a different speed than it updates like when it's not has this little modal pop up. It's interesting. They don't update at the same time. Kind of strange. Okay. I'm still 300 away from that. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like I'm a fair bit off from the line here. Yeah, I'm going to go a little further. What I was just doing, I was just trying to cite down the line I already made to say, you know, you're perfectly, when you only see like one bookmark, when it's actually, you know, four, then you know you're lined up. So I'm off a little bit, at least, so I won't quite have a straight line if I put, if I drop my bookmark here. I'd rather have the straight line than be exactly accurate on distance. Plus, I've got a little, little space. So we're going to go... A little bit more. And then we're going to try and sight down this line here. And we're just going to try and, we'll just set our bookmark right on it when we think we're in a good spot. And you can see those bookmarks are starting to sort of coalesce together. We're almost to where we're going to drop our bookmark. Yeah, close enough. Okay, and we should still be at 350. Okay, well, so we're not—we don't have it exactly right, but right, we're we're sort of close enough. You know, we're we're if we're within like a kilometer, right? That we don't we don't have more granularity than one kilometer anyway on these distances. So if we're plus or minus one kilometer, I'm usually pretty okay with that. There may be use cases for certain tactical situations where you're not okay with that. You really want like. 100, 100 meter, you know, accuracy, but this isn't one of those things. This is going to be, uh, 
you know, I need to, I need to tell a fleet, an incoming fleet of like paladins or something like that, or, or dreadnoughts, because I got just got dropped on by a by a blobs fleet, and I want to I want to tell people where to warp to so that they can be at optimals to attack that fleet, right? Then it's it's you know one or two kilometers is not going to be the difference maker there. There's 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 you think about it, there's 2,500 meter variability just in where you land when you warp to something. So as long as your bookmarks are you know, within one kilometer, then you're already more accurate than the warp in will be. And so you, you should be good to go at that point. So it's really just about how retentive you are and how irritated you're going to be by not having things be in a straight line. I get really annoyed if things aren't in a straight line. So uh, I make them be in a straight line. <laughs> That's the long and the short of it. Because uh, it'll bug me. It'll bug me. So I'm going to look at these. I'm going to look at these bookmarks a lot uh, as I'm as I'm mining uh, on this moon. So I want to not be irritated every time I look at them, thinking, "Oh, I should have done a better job of that." In fact, I just did that stupidly. I was not on top of that bookmark when I started moving, which means my bookmarks are going to be askew, and I don't like that. So I'm going to reapproach. The other thing I'm going to do here is instead of approaching the pop bookmark, I'm going to approach the far bookmark so that I'm minimizing sort of my deviation in my in my direction. Uh, so I'm going to approach that one, uh, and then I'm going to hit the micro warp. Okay. Oh, one thing I'm going to do though is I want this to be based not on the distance from the far one. But on the distance to the pop. Ooh, I'm already almost there. Pop. Mm, okay. So there's my pop. Whoops. Still need to be able to see that. 204, 203, 202, 201. Okay. Yep, got it. Okay. Again, you want to you you want to anchor everything off of this point, not any of the other ones you created. Everything should always reference back to the center point, so that you're minimizing your error. So at about 130, 125, I'm going to slow down again. Okay, slow down. Ooh, right at 500. That's cool. It doesn't happen for me very often. Seven. Now this should be every two seconds. I should be ticking down. Five, four, tick, three, tick, two, tick, one, tick, zero. Right. So I could. I was able to anticipate when that was going to happen because I knew that my speed was, in this case, exactly five hundred. Uh, and so that should be a really nice, accurate, accurate bookmark. Uh, so, yeah, so the next thing is, will be to, to make the, this, 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 uh, zero elevation, um, line for your front and your back. Um, so I'm gonna warp out here to my, to my Insta doc. And then I'm gonna warp to can't warp to the front layer because it's too close. Uh, I'm gonna warp to the back layer then. And same deal, I'm gonna reapproach my bookmark and I'm gonna do that horizontal thing again. Actually what I'm gonna do, I changed my mind. I'm gonna warp to the 300 out here to the 300 right, and I'm going to try and go toward the moon. The only reason I'm doing it this way is because this direction I only need to travel 100 kilometers. If I travel from the center point, I need to burn 300 kilometers, so this will be faster, in theory. Oh, you know, I'm stupid and I did not approach that bookmark. See, I'm not following my own, my own advice. And then we'll 
wrap this up because everything else is just doing the same thing over and over again. Just um, once you got the principles down, then you're you're all good. So do that wasn't there we go. Do that. Okay, we're already going max speed. Speed up. Okay, now we're gonna wait for this guy to get to 100. We're gonna start slowing down at 75. And we're gonna try and stop right at 100. You can see that 100 line creeping in too, that's kind of fun. Seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Stop ship, and pretty much right on a hundred. Okay, now we don't have to do like the Pythagorean thing now uh, because I don't need to do the triangle. I know I'm a hundred away from that. I know I should be three hundred away from that. And holy cow, I actually am. That does not happen very often. So, uh, yeah, bookmark time. All right? So, same thing on the other side. Same thing on the front. Same thing on the front. And then connect the dots from these outer edges into the middle. So then what you'll have is a plane of uh, three times uh, seven, 21 bookmarks that are all your zero elevation layer. And then from your zero elevation layer, you're going to keyboard uh, steer, you know, warp to your bookmark, uh, slow speed, keyboard steer up, and then speed up, and then make your bookmarks at, at one, two, three hundred. Do the same thing for down on each of the bookmarks. And you're going to end up with 49 uh, bookmarks for each layer. You have three layers, so you're going to have whatever that is, 100 and something, 147 bookmarks for your uh, for your strategic grid. And they'll be all done. Uh, now, the other thing that I'm, I have not demonstrated here, but is the same exact thing in principle, just with shorter distances, is the mining grid. All right, so that's for the, the strategic grid. For the mining grid, you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to do it slower and with shorter distances, right? So usually the mining grid I do is based on me flying like a, uh, hulks and the range of a hulk uh, and the boosts of a porpoise uh, because that is a really common combination that we see. Uh, I do have an orca as well, but I don't pull it out as often as I pull out the porpoise. Uh, I often, times, oftentimes I'll be mining alone. If I'm alone, I tend to use the porpoise so I can get out faster. If I'm mining in a group, I'll break out the orca. So anyway, choose whatever distance you want for your spacing. Uh, but I tend to use 40 kilometers as the spacing because then any given rock, not exactly, but, but any given rock is very likely to be within 20 kilometers of a bookmark. Now, because we're not making bookmarks in a circle, uh, there is a spot in the middle of a square of four bookmarks that um, that is like 21 or 22 kilometers away from them all. But okay, you know, I guess we'll just accept that. So in that case, if you've already got your, 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 uh, once you've got your grid set up or, or once you've got your sort of up and downs and your left and rights, uh, you can just approach them, right? I can just approach this. Um, and now I can just watch this guy. Now here, I probably don't want to use my micro warp because I'm only doing 40 kilometers. So here, I'll just use the afterburner. I've got a dual prop on the stiletto. Uh, or you may just slow boat it, you know. And so here, where I slow down is going to be different. I'm going to slow down at 30 since I'm going to make my, my bookmark at 40. All right, then I'll slow down. I've got a nice little line coming up at me too, so I can see when that's going to hit me. And we'll hit it right before the line gets there. Cool. Right, and then we'll speed up again. I don't have an 80 kilometer line though, I don't think. So 
they get dropped like every 50 once you get past 100. So we'll start slowing down at 70. Okay. Get ready to hit enter on our bookmark. <coughs> So now I've created 40 and 80 kilometer bookmarks to the right of my center point. So let me get back to where I'm supposed to be. Uh, oh, cool. I can just hit dock. Uh, right. So basic principles. Um, pay attention to how your ship handles and when you should start slowing down. Um, when you want to go flat along the same plane, zoom in really close to your ship, uh, under it, and have the horizon of your tactical overlay be right in the middle of your little, I guess it's not showing, right in the little middle of your reticle of your, of your cursor, have the horizon be right in the middle of that and when you double click so that you go flat. Uh, when you want to go straight up and down, then set a very slow speed and keyboard uh, keyboard steer up or down and hold that up or down until you're at full speed. Uh, and when you're doing your left-right uh, tacks, use the Pythagorean theorem along with a bookmark you've created for your structure and the bookmark you've created for your center point so that you can check that uh, the distances are what you expect, and if you're if you're making your your center point bookmark at 190 from the center of the Athenor, uh, and you're making your the far edge of your box be 300 kilometers away from your center point, then you expect that position to be 355 kilometers away from the Athenor, right? So 190 from the center point is 190 from the Athenor. Your edge is 300 from your center point. So your edge is 355 away from the Athenor. And if that's where you're at, then you have a 90 degree angle between uh, between the Athenor, your line, and where you're dropping your bookmark. So that's it. Those are the details uh, on, on making a tack grid.